And those recorders seem pretty... Chapter 35, The Nature of Light and Laws of Geometric Optics. Problem number one. According to the particle theory of light, the speed of light in liquids is... Well, looking back in the history of the particle theory of light, the, the very first particle theory of light, the, the idea was that if light were to travel through a medium, that uh, the gravity of the particles in that medium would pull the light along, and hence the idea is that it would actually travel greater, faster, in a liquid than it would, say, in a gas. Of course, this was obviously wrong, at least later on in, in uh, history, when the particle theory was um, reemerged in, in a different way. But um, at that time, the very first time in, in Newtonian optics, it was thought that it would travel faster than, than in air. Problem number two, according to Einstein's theory. Problem two, according to Einstein's theory, the energy of a photon is, according to Einstein's theory, um, from the theory of the photoelectric effect, from, the, from which he got the uh, Nobel, Nobel Prize, it is proportional to the frequency. The energy of a photon equals Planck's constant times the frequency. So the answer to that one would be B. Okay. Problem number three. Light behaves like a wave at times and a particle at other times. So depending on uh, your situation and how you're looking at it, um, light will definitely behave like a wave or at other times like a particle. It just depends on uh, how you're looking at it and what uh, applications you're looking at for. Problem number four. The first successful measurement of the speed of light was made by Ole Raymer when in astronomical measurements of the um, moons going around uh, Jupiter. And he was able to come up with a pretty good estimate for the speed of light on the order of uh, 10 to the 8 meters per second. Actually, 2 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Problem number five. An experiment to measure the speed of light uses an apparatus similar to Fizeau's. The distance between the light source and the mirror is 10 meters, and the wheel has 800 notches. If the wheel rotates at 9,000 revolutions per second, when the light from the source is ex extinguished, what is the experimental value for the speed of light C in meters per second? Okay, in this problem, uh, we're asked to look at the um, apparatus of Fizeau. And he had an apparatus to be very crude here. Had a number of notches around a wheel. And he had a light source. that would pass through this wheel as this wheel was turning. Now the, the wheel, we're told that this wheel is turning at 9,000 revolutions per second. So that's our angular velocity, 9,000 revolutions per second. And the light's gonna travel through this wheel, at least between the notches, hopefully. It's gonna hit a mirror over here And it's going to come back. And if the light is really fast, it can travel through one of these notches, hit the mirror, come back through that same notch, and come back to us, and we'd still see the light, and it would, it would be uninterrupted in that sense. However, and this the idea here is to try to measure the speed of light. So what we're going to do is you increase the speed of this wheel so that it actually makes it through a notch, hits the mirror, comes back, and in the meantime, one of these uh, tabs have actually rotated into the path of the light. 
So it gets distinguished, extinguished, and also distinguished on its way back. So you don't see the light on its way back. So when that first happens, then we know that this wheel has rotated half of, half of one of those notches. In other words, if here's a notch and there's a notch, it's rotated half of that angle. So what we're going to do is we're going to first say that the light's going to travel this whole distance here. And this distance here is 10 meters. So the total distance the light travels is there and back again. So that total distance will be 20 meters. Omega is 9,000 revolutions per second. And so the angle, at least in terms of a fractional revolution, the angle that we're talking about here is going to be omega times t. That's how much angle we're going to go through in a certain time of t. Now the time that we're interested in is the time it takes for us to go from a notch to a tab. Now, we're told this wheel has 800 notches. And the angle, so we're talking about 800 notches. If we go from a notch to a tab, we're going half that distance in, in terms of a revolution. So we're going to go 1 1,600th of a revolution. would be uh, our angle theta. And that should be equal to 9,000 revolutions per second times t. Well, I should put this over here. So the, now let's solve this for t. So t, we go 1 1,600th of a revolution over 9,000 revolutions per second And that should give me 6.94 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds. In other words, the light has gone there and back again in 6.94 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds. So far, so good. So, uh, velocity would equal our distance per time. That's going to be 20 meters in 6.94 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds. And that would give us a speed for the speed of light of 2.88 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Actual value is around 3 or about 2.998. So that's a very good measurement for the speed of light. And our answer would be C on five. Okay, Rick. Point number six. A light ray is incident on the surface of water. Index of refraction for water is 1.33. At an angle of 60 degrees relative to the normal to the surface. The angle of the refracted wave is. Okay. Well, we have a, we have a situation like this. We have a light ray. Oops, we have a water surface. Index of the water is 1.33. Index of the first medium is air, which we'll say is 1.0. Let's say we have a normal to the surface, and the light ray comes in at an angle of 60 degrees. So that's our incident angle. We'll call that theta 1. And then we refract towards the normal in the water. So anytime you go from a lower index to a higher index, you'll refract towards the normal. And this angle refraction will be theta 2. And we wish to find what that theta 2 is. According to Snell's law, it is true that the index 1 times the sine of theta 1 should equal the index 2 times the sine of theta 2. Snell's law. 
And so in this case, we want to find theta 2. So let's solve this for theta 2. Let's divide both sides by n2. Take the inverse sign. So I have theta 2 equal index 1 over index 2. Yeah, I'm going to leave myself in the room here. Inverse sign of index 1 over index 2. Sine theta 1. Divide by this, take an inverse sign, solve for theta 2. Now put in the numbers, this would be the sine inverse of 1 over 1.33 sine 60 degrees. And hopefully, if you put all those numbers in there, you would get 40.6 degrees. So the ray comes in at 60 degrees, refracts towards a normal at 40.6 degrees. Our answer would be C, 40 degrees. Problem number seven. A light ray is incident on the surface of water, index of refraction 1.33, at an angle 60 degrees relative to the normal to the surface. The angle of the reflected wave is, well, for reflection, uh, Given a normal to a surface, here's our angle of incidence, 60 degrees. And the angle of reflection, also 60 degrees. So for the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, our answer is answer D, 60 degrees. Number eight, a light ray whose frequency is 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz in vacuum is incident on water, index of refraction 1.33. The wavelength of the light after it enters the water is in nanometers. Okay, before we uh, find the um, wavelength in the water, let's find the wavelength in the vacuum. So we know that uh, speed of light equals the wavelength times the frequency, so the wavelength in the vacuum will equal the speed of light divided by the frequency. 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, divide by, and this was 6 times 10 to the 4, 14 hertz. So, that is going to give us a wavelength of 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 6 meters, or I could write this as 5 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. That's in a vacuum. If we enter a medium such as water, then the wavelength will be reduced by the index of refraction, by a factor of the index of refraction. So the wavelength in water will equal the wavelength in a vacuum divided by the index of refraction of the medium. And in this case, then that will be 5 times 10 to the minus 7 divided by 1.33 and that will give us 3.76 times 10 to the minus 7 meters or I could write that as 376 nanometers which is the form of the answer for, for D. So I just nanometers, answer D. Problem number nine. The speed of light changes when it goes from ethyl alcohol, index of refraction 1.361, to carbon tetrachloride, index of refraction 1.461. The ratio of the speeds, velocity 2 to velocity 1, is... If we're comparing the uh, speeds between media, the index of refraction times the speed will equal a uh, constant. So in this case, we want the ratio of the speed in carbon tetrachloride to ethyl alcohol. So we'll say that uh, this is the ethyl alcohol. And this is the uh, carbon 
tetrachloride. And there. So let's rearrange this formula up here. And uh, we divide both sides by index 2. And divide both sides by velocity 1. We'd have velocity 2 over, over velocity 1 equals index 1 over index 2. And by putting the values, we had for ethyl alcohol 1.361, and for carbon tetrachloride 1.461. So this gives us a ratio of 0.932. No units on that. It's strictly a ratio. So the velocity in the second medium is only 93.2% what it was in the first medium. Slow down. Answer is C.93. Problem number 10. Light is refracted through a diamond. If the angle of incidence is 30 degrees and the angle of refraction is 12 degrees, what is the index of refraction? Again, we're going to use uh, Snell's law, so we're going to say that uh, N1 sine angle of incidence we equal N2 sine angle of refraction, where 1 is the first medium and 2 is the second medium. This is going to be air, this is going to be diamond. We want to find the index of refraction of a diamond, so let's divide by the sine of theta 2, and so we'll have the index of the diamond is going to equal index of air sine theta 1 over the sine of theta 2. This will equal 1 times the sine. We have incidence of 30 degrees. The refracted angle is 12 degrees. And this comes out to 2.4 so the index of refraction of the diamond is 2.4, answer B. Okay. Number 11. Two mirrors are at right angles to one another. The light ray is incident on the first at an angle of 30 degrees with respect to the normal to the surface. What is the angle of reflection from the second surface? Okay. Let's take a look at this. Uh, we got two uh, mirrors. They have right angles, and the light ray is coming in at an angle of incidence of 30 degrees. So let's make that 30 degrees there. And if it were to reflect off this first mirror, then it would have an angle of reflection of 30 degrees. So it would be coming off like this. So this angle here is 30 degrees. This is mirror number one. This is mirror number two. So if this angle is 30 degrees, that's 30 degrees, and this is the right triangle, the right angle right here, I'm sorry. Then this angle here is 60 degrees. And if I were to look at this right triangle here, uh, if that's 60 degrees, and this angle here would be 30 degrees up there. And as we are incident upon the second mirror, looking at this right angle up here, that would make this angle of incidence up here 60 degrees. Now, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection for reflection. So, this angle here of reflection of the second mirror, I've really drawn that well, it would be a nice parallel there, uh, will be also be 60 degrees. So we have 30 degrees, 30 degrees, 60, 60, and so our angle of reflection from the second surface is indeed 60 degrees, answer B. Problem number 12, two mirrors are at right angles to one another. If an object is placed near the mirrors, what is the largest number of images that would be seen in the mirrors? Well, let's see. Uh, let's take a look at this one. We got uh, again. We have uh, two mirrors at right angles, and 
and uh, say you had a, I guess that's an apple or a cherry, I don't know what that is. Uh, you have an object over here. In order to see the image, the, um, the light from the object will have to come back to the object. So one possibility is that the light would go straight here and then come straight back up upon reflection. And of course, that would make it appear like there was an image over here. But that would be one image that you could possibly see. From the second mirror, this is mirror number one. That's one image. Here's mirror number two. You could do the same thing over here. You could have a, the light from this object hit this mirror over here, reflect right back, and it would appear like there's an image over here somewhere, but that would be the second possible image that you could see. Now let's, let's assume we've got light rays coming into this corner over here. If I had light rays coming to this corner, what's going to happen? Well, we just saw from problem number 11 that if we have something coming in, incident like this at an angle, It'll come off like this and it'll go off, and the outgoing ray will actually be parallel to the incoming ray. So if this is uh, close enough, we, we would have a ray coming in like this, bouncing here, and then coming back here, like that. And if, there, if it's tight enough, then the image ray will actually come back to the object. So we can imagine there is an object somewhere down here, or an image somewhere down here that would be seen um, by this, this object itself. And so that will constitute image number three, and that's the best we can do. So we would see three images. Point number 13, a person in a boat sees a fish in the water, index of refraction 1.33. The light rays make an angle of 40 degrees relative to the water's surface. What is the true angle in degrees relative to the water surface of the same rays when beneath the surface? All right, so uh, we're looking at from water, and we note that uh, since we're outside, here's here's the water. Let's call it the waters are rich, the uh, light rays originating there. So that will be our first index of refraction. refraction. Here's uh, the air, and as we see it, the light rays are coming out at an angle of 40 degrees relative to the water surface. So that's how we're looking at it. That's how we see the fish. We want to kind of work our way back. Um, this, so that means this angle of refraction, as, as you can see, it would be 50 degrees, 90 minus 40. And as you go from a higher index to lower index, it always refracts away from the normal. So uh, this is somewhere inward like this. And we'll say that this is some theta here. And we also want to find out what this, call it five. We want to find out what that angle is right there. And this is all coming from fish down here. So the light is originating at the fish, coming here, refracting away from the normal, coming to our eye. Well, this whole situation is still governed by Snell's law. So we can set that up for that, and we'll say n1 sine theta1, call this theta1, should equal n2 sine theta 2, where theta 2 in this case would be the angle of refraction 50 degrees. Let's solve this and find out what theta 1 is. So we'll say theta 1 is equal to the inverse sine of index 2 over index 1 sine theta 2. Let's put in our numbers. Inverse sine 
Um, index 2 is air, so this is going to be 1 over 1.33 sine. Theta 2 is the angle in the air. That would be 50 degrees. If I put those numbers in there, I come up with 35.2 degrees. So that means that this angle, theta 1, is 35.2 degrees. But the question is, what is the angle, the true angle, relative to the water surface of the same rays when in the water, when beneath the surface? So we want to find out what phi is here. And uh, since that's, they're both part of a right angle there, I can say that phi would equal 90 minus theta 1. That would be 90 minus 35.2 gives me 50. 4.8 degrees. And the answer I choose then is answer D, 55 degrees. Problem number 14. A fish is 80 centimeters below the surface of a pond. What is the apparent depth in centimeters when viewed from a position almost directly above the fish? All right, well, two ways we could approach this. Uh, you know, if you're looking down at something, the apparent depth is equal to, I'm sorry, um, the real depth is equal to the apparent depth. Now, Apparent depth is equal to the real depth divided by the index of refraction. So if the fish is actually a distance of 0.8 meters below, which would be the real depth, that would be 0.8 divided by 1.33. So that would give us 0 0.602 meters. So it would appear that the fish was six tenths of a meter below the water surface and it was actually eight tenths of a meter below the water surface. So if you worked on that and tried to catch the fish, you would miss it because you thought it was shallower than it actually was. Here's another way to do this one. Um, I'm just getting too much information possibly. But uh, for a refracting surface, you can have the image and the object and the image distance, which I'm going to call Q, is equal to the negative index 2 or index 1 times the object distance. In this case, the object distance is 0.8 meters. The image is what I'm trying to see. And uh, so, so this is putting out a ray like this, and we're looking at the image over here. So in this case, uh, our first, the N1 is is where the object is. So that's going to be the index or fraction of the water. This would be a negative index 2, which would be 1 over 1.33 times the object distance, 0.8. Gives us a negative 0 0.602 meters. The negative just means that we're on the opposite side of where the rays were defined, which is with the object. So that's just another way to look at it. Uh, this is probably the easiest way. Problem 15. A diver shines light up to the surface of a flat glass bottom boat at an angle of 30 degrees relative to the normal. If the index of refraction of water and glass are 1.33 and 1.5 respectively, at what angle in degrees does the light leave the glass relative to the normal? Well, let's set this one up. We actually have uh, three surfaces in this one. We've got uh, the diver is actually in the water. That'll be our first first one. Index refraction 1.33, and uh, he or she uh, shines a light at an angle of incidence of 30 degrees. So our theta one will be 30 degrees. 
We're going to go into an index of refraction of 1.5 for the glass. So our second medium is glass. And if you go from a lower index to a higher index, you're going to refract towards the normal. So this will refract somewhere inward like this, kind of. And then we'll go from glass into air. And air will be our third medium, index refraction zero. As we go from a, uh, oh, let's make it two. As we go from a higher index to lower index, so we refract away from the normal. So we'll refract outward like this, and that'll be our final final angle theta three. So something like that. Here, refract in and refract out with these three um, media. Well, uh, Snell's law applies to every interface. So we're going to have Snell's law applying at this interface and Snell's law applying at this interface. The way I could write it is I could say N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2 for the light when it hits this first interface. And for that matter, if I look at the second interface, I could write N2 sine theta 2 equals N3 sine theta 3 for that interface from the glass to the air. And I see something interesting here. Index times the angle is constant all the way through, and this is the same as this. So I could have written this as one equation, N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2 equals N3 sine theta 3. In fact, I probably could have in terms of mathematics, cut out the middleman here. And I can say that N1 sine theta 1 equals N3 sine theta 3. Well, that's kind of nice. Knowing that, uh, let's see, the angle is incident at 30 degrees. So we just want to find out the final refraction angle. So let me work over this way. Solving for theta 3, we're going to divide both sides by n3, take the inverse sine. I'll have the sine inverse of n1 divided by n3 sine theta 1 equals theta 3. Or theta 3 is going to be called the sine inverse of our values. One point three three over one sine thirty degrees. And that will give me forty one point seven degrees. So ultimately when it leaves the glass, it'll, it'll leave with the angle of refraction of 41.7 degrees. Best answer is answer C, 42 degrees. 16. A person looks horizontally at the edge of a swimming pool. If its length is 5 meters and the pool is filled to the surface, to what depth in meters could the observer see? 0.33. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at this. Here's our water interface, and uh, the uh, width of the pool is 5 meters, so this length here is 5 meters, and we're over here, and we're looking at a ray that has come, and it's just barely meet, reaching our eye, so that means it's it's come hit the surface and refracted to where we can see it. And so let's say that uh, some ray, well, actually, we're just barely seeing it at this point. But some ray has come up like this and refracted in like that. 
Okay. So this would be our theta 1, and this would be our theta 2 for that situation. Ray coming in, refracting to our eyes. Right. We want to see what the depth is. Now, if I'm looking at this, this is the index for the water, and this is the index for air. Again, we have Snell's law applying. So we would say that uh, n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. Let's find out what theta 1 is based on this. So let's uh, divide both sides by n1, take the inverse sine. So theta 1 is index 2 over index 1. Oops. Sine inverse index 2 over index 1, sine theta 2, so sine inverse uh, 1 over 1.33, theta 2 is this right angle here, that's the angle from the normal for the angle of refraction, so that's going to be 90 degrees, making this 1, so we have the sine inverse of 1 over 1.33. And that gives me 48.75 degrees. So this angle here is 48.75 degrees. Now the question is, how far to what depth can we actually see? So we can see anywhere along this line to whatever depth uh, and as far as we can this way would be 5 meters. Now if that's 48.75 degrees, that means this is 48.75 degrees. And the 5 meters would be the opposite side of this right triangle here. So how would I want to do that? Let's say, because uh, this is the depth we want right here, D, and that's L. Looking at this right triangle right here, I would say that uh, the tangent of theta, in this case, would equal the opposite side or the adjacent side, which would be L divided by D. So I could say that D is equal to L divided by the tangent of theta, which would be 5 divided by the tangent of 48.75 degrees. And that will give me 4.38 meters. So by looking straight on the level of the pool that has a width of 5 meters, I can see down to a depth of 4.38 meters. And that would be my answer, 4.4 uh, meters, answer B for number 16. 17, an aquarium contains a 5 centimeter layer of water, index of refraction 1.33, floating on top of carbon tetrachloride, index of 1.461. If the angle of incidence into the water from the air is 30 degrees, what is the angle of refraction into the carbon tetrachloride? Well, this is kind of similar to a problem we had earlier where we were going, I guess, from the water into the air through a layer of glass, I guess. But in this case, uh, we're going to start in the air. Coming in at an angle of incidence of 30 degrees. So we'll say that's theta 1. And uh, then we're going to go into um, water. So we're going to refract towards the normal because we're going from a lower index into a higher index. And then we're going to go into carbon tetrachloride. Oops. 
is slightly different because, again, we're going to go from a lower index to a higher index, and we're going to refract again towards the normal. So we'll call this theta 2 and this theta 3. Snell's law applies to both interfaces, and we could write n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2 equals n3 sine theta 3. And again, we can probably get rid of the uh, middleman here. So uh, we want to find theta 3, the, the uh, angle of refraction in the carbon tetrachloride. Solve this for theta 3, so we'd say theta 3 is equal to the inverse sine of index 1 divided by index 3 sine theta 1. So that's equal to the inverse sine of 1 over 1.461 sine 30 degrees. And that is equal to twenty degrees. So that's our answer. Answer D. We're going to say that uh, that the thickness of the layer of water, which was given as five centimeters, uh, is extraneous information in this problem uh, because as we as we said, we kind of skipped the middleman, so that was, it didn't really matter what the thickness of the water was. Problem 18. An aquarium contains a 5 centimeter layer of water, index of 1.333, floating on top of carbon tetrachloride, index of 1.461. If the angle of incidence into the water from the carbon tetrachloride is 20 degrees, what is the angle of refraction into the air? Uh, this one is the exact reverse of the previous problem. What it's saying is that we're going to start here, and we're going to start with a ray at an angle of 20 degrees, which was given, and then it's going to refract away because we're going to go from a higher index to a lower index. And it'll come in like this, and then that will refract away. And this formula will still apply. So uh, mathematically, Let's do it anyway, but uh, mathematically we would say that uh, n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2 equals n3 sine theta 3. Get rid of that. Solve for theta 1. That's going to equal n3 divided by n1. Sine of theta 1 would be n3 divided by n1. Sine of theta 3, so theta 1 will be the inverse sine n3 or n1. Sine of theta 3 would be inverse sine of 1.461 uh, of 1 over 1.461. I guess I just um, I call I retain the same order as I had here. So we're still looking for theta one, which is in the water. So N three is the carbon tetrachloride. And uh, actually, I didn't work this out because I just said it was the reverse. But if you did that, hopefully you'd come up with an answer of uh, thirty degrees. In other words, exactly the reverse of the previous problem where we actually had an incident of 30 degrees. Problem 19. Light strikes a diamond, index of refraction 2.42, at an angle of 60 degrees. What is the angle of refraction? Snell's law applies. So we have uh, N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. We want to find the angle of refraction, which would be theta 2. So theta 2 will equal n 
sine inverse, n1 over n2, sine theta 1. And our first is uh, in air, our second is in diamond. So this would be 1 over 2.42. It strikes at an angle of incidence of 60 degrees. And so our angle of refraction is 20.97 degrees. Answer A, 21 degrees. Problem 20. Light strikes a diamond, index of refraction 2.42, immersed in glycerin. Index of refraction 1.473 at an angle of 60 degrees. What is the angle of refraction? All right, this is uh, just like the previous problem, only we're not going from air. We're going, we're going to go from the glycerin at an angle of 60 degrees into the diamond. So, all things being the same, basically, Snell's law. Solve this for the angle of refraction. Theta 2, we equal the inverse sine of index 1 over index 2 sine theta 1. Inverse sine. Index 1 is the glycerin, because we're inside the glycerin. That's going to be 1.473 over the index of diamond, 2.42. 60 degrees. If we put all those numbers in, we get 31.8 degrees. Answer, best answer is C, 32 degrees. 21. The diver shines an underwater searchlight at the surface of a pond. Index of refraction of the pond is 1.33. At what angle relative to the surface Will the light be totally reflected? Okay, so uh, this is Snell's Law, but we have to think about uh, how this is going to work. You're inside the water to begin with. You're, if we call that the first index of refraction, then or if you're in the pond, n1 would be 1.33, then outside it will be in the air. So that'll be one. Shine the searchlight at the surface of the pond. At what angle would the light be totally reflected? So let's say we shine the searchlight at some angle theta one. What's going to happen when it's totally reflected? Well, when it reflects, our angle of reflection will be equal to our angle of incidence. So theta one will equal theta two for reflection. But we want to apply the fact that none of it's going to be refracted. And when the, the threshold where that happens is where this light comes in and it basically is refracted 90 degrees, so it's along that interface there, so it's not really refracted into the air itself. And so we think in that terms that our theta 2 then would be 90 degrees for, to cause total internal reflection. Let's apply Snell's law, n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. Solve this for theta 1. So theta 1 will equal n2 over n1 sine inverse. I keep on wanting to forget that. I don't know why. Sine theta 2. This will be sine inverse of the second medium, which would be 1, over the first medium, 1.33, times the sine of 90 degrees, which itself is 1. And the sine inverse of that is 48.75 degrees. So if I were a diver and I sh shine the light, at an angle of incidence of 48.75 degrees, I would get total internal reflection. However, the problem says, at what angle relative to the surface will the light be reflected? This is relative to the normal. 
So we want to find this angle relative to the surface, which would be 90 minus our incident angle. So the angle we want is 90 minus theta 1, 90 minus 48.75 gives me 41.25. So the angle relative to the surface of the water at 41.25 degrees will cause uh, 90 degree angle of refraction, total internal reflection then, and uh, my answer then would be B, 41 degrees. One little note, uh, you know, this is just the critical angle for where that total internal reflection will start, so any angle less than that, uh, according to the surface, will also cause total internal reflection. So uh, um, any angle greater than this for incident or less than this, will still be totally internal, internally reflected. Column 22, a layer of ethyl alcohol, index of refraction 1.361, is on top of water, 1.333. At what angle relative to the normal, to the interface of the two liquids, is light totally reflected? Let's take a look at this one, a layer of ethyl alcohol is on top of water. So let's, uh, let's set that up. There's our ethyl alcohol. Let's actually call that the N1, which is 1.361. Here's our water. At what angle relative to the normal of the surface between the two liquids, which would be this surface right here, will light be totally reflected? So let's say, let's say we had light coming in here at some angle theta call theta 1, and it's going to be totally reflected, which means in terms of refraction, theta 2 is going to be a 90 degree angle, because we have no light actually going into the water. All the light's going to actually end up being reflected. So we have to apply the refraction idea, at least at the critical angle, where um, in Snell's law, theta 2 is 90 degrees. Set it up. Snell's law. And solve this for theta 1. So theta 1 will equal inverse sine n2 over n1 sine theta 2. We're going from the uh, ethyl alcohol into the water. So uh, N1 is actually the 1.33, uh, 1.361. N2 is 1.33. Theta 2 is 90 degrees. That should be 1. So we're the sine inverse of 1.33 divided by 1.361 gives me an angle of 78. Four degrees. So it's actually pretty, pretty low angle here to the interface because that's our angle of incidence, seventy-eight point four. Really, by eleven point six degrees, will cause internal and total internal reflection on this one. Um, but for angle of incidence at seventy-eight degrees, answer A. To, well, I, um, I got a suggestion here from Damon and. Uh, as, as you note, here we're totally within the liquid. We're, we're starting from the ethyl alcohol going into the water. So even though there might be air up here, that does not work into the workings of this problem because we're looking at this particular interface, which is one liquid to the next. And uh, so it's kind of nice to just focus in on that and not worry about the air that's around us in this week. Phone 23. A layer of water, index of 1.333, floats on a container of carbon tetrachloride, index of 1.461. What is the critical angle at the interface? Uh, two things. One is we just need to focus on the interface between the two liquids. So 
Again, air is not considered. We've got uh, two liquids. Uh, let's call this water up here. Well, let's, let me not give a subscript on that yet. And we have uh, tetra carbon tetrachloride down here. 1.461. The second thing is, it says, what is the critical angle at the interface? But it didn't say where we're going from where to where. It didn't say whether we're going from the water into the carbon tetrachloride or from the carbon tetrachloride into the water. In order to have a critical angle, you have to have a situation where you could, could have total internal reflection. And in order for that to happen, you have to go from the higher index to the lower index. So we have to be going from the carbon tetrachloride into the water in order to have total internal reflection, hence a critical angle. So I'm going to call this N1 and this N2. And then we'll say that we're coming in this way, at some angle theta 1, causing an angle of refraction of 90 degrees for a critical angle. So we say N1 sine theta 1 of N2 sine theta 2. Solve this for theta 1. And we have inverse sine of the second medium, 1.33 over the first medium, 1.461 sine angle in the second medium is 90 degrees sine of that would be 1 the sine inverse of 1.33 over 1.461 is 65.8 degrees so our critical angle is 66 degrees answer C 24 a laser beam is incident at an angle of 30 degrees to the vertical onto a solution of Cairo syrup in water. The index of pure water is 1.33. If the beam is refracted to 19.24 degrees to the vertical, what is the index of refraction of the syrup solution? Well, we have a solution of Cairo syrup in water. So we're actually going to be going from water To the Cairo syrup, which we don't know what that is. So this is water up here, Cairo syrup. And uh, the beam is refracted to 19.24 degrees to the vertical. So as we come in here at some angle theta 1, we were refracted at an angle theta 2, where theta 2 is equal to 19.24 degrees. What is the index of refraction of the SERP solution? Okay, let's set up Snell's law. And so we'll say N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. Uh, this was given as 30 degrees, sorry. Theta 1 was given as 30 degrees. The laser is coming in there. So we'll solve this for the index refraction of the Cairo syrup. So N2 will equal N1 sine theta 1 divided by sine theta 2. So this would be 1.33. Sine 30 degrees over sine 19.24 degrees gives me 1.517. So the Cairo syrup solution is 1.517. Quick check. Uh, we came in at an angle here, we refracted towards the normal. So it should have been a higher index of refraction from what we came from, and it is 1.517.